safety update, Dr. Worsley. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dr. Casey. We're ecstatic to be here today to talk about a school safety update as a parent uh, here in Chesterfield County with two students that are still in Chesterfield County Public Schools. Um, people say you don't necessarily want to know how the sausage is made. I'm one of those people. I'm glad I know how the sausage is made because the schools and our folks and on our teams are doing a dynamic job. And I think you're going to get opportunity to see that here today as our presenters on our human services team um, representing schools, uh, DSS, as well as mental health support services and police come together as we have to give you this presentation. So first, as we begin to kick things off this afternoon to talk about school safety update, we're going to have Dr. John Murray, who is going to be talking about the schools overall, giving us a little wraparound service of what to expect as schools begin to open back up and safety measures that have been put into place as well. Followed by him, we're going to move to also having our social services director, Ms. Rogers, who's going to come. And she's going to give you a little opportunity to take a peek and see uh, how social services also support schools and the partnerships that are there within. And then followed by her, we're going to have uh, mental health support services that is also going to present uh, Ms. Kelly Freed is going to also talk about how mental health support services support our schools, not just during the school day, but also partnering with the partners as well as after school time. And then following culminating this experience is going to be none other than our acting police chief, uh, Badgerill, who is also going to wrap this up talking about what school, excuse me, what police is doing, what the MOU looks like, changes that have been made, and perhaps invite you to an upcoming event that he's going to share with you at a later time. So with that being said, I'll turn it over to Dr. Murray. All right, thank you. Welcome. Good to see you all. Well, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair, board members, Dr. Casey. Thank you for the invitation uh, to come and share a little bit about uh, school and campus safety. I'm John Murray, Deputy Superintendent. I know you gave me the interim role when, when you introduced me originally, Mr. Holland. I've got another week with Dr. Doherty uh, before, that, before that happens, but I appreciate it. <laughs> so no doubt campus safety to include addressing individual needs has been uh, has seen significant evolution and attention over the past, say, 25 years, but in particular, more recently, as we've endured national trends pertaining to school violence, mental health, substance abuse, et cetera. And Chesterfield is not insulated from such issues. As such, along with high quality instruction, safety remains our highest priority. So this first slide and the slides to follow, in fact, uh, offers a peek at some of the uh, focal areas currently uh, and over the past year. And while not an exhaustive list, I would like to highlight some of our physical safety enhancements first. Um, but I'll pause to mention that what you won't notice here are some of the uh, tried and true, the long standing initiatives like emergency response plans or faculty ID badges or uh, code of student conduct things of, of the like, Raptor technology, which uh, screens for sex offenders upon entry, visitor policies, but rather things that are newer and shinier uh, to our, our school division. So foremost, uh, thank you to the board for your assistance. Bullet one um, in helping to fund school security officers for our elementary schools. Uh, where SROs, as you know, are not assigned. Parents have been advocating for this human resource for quite some time, and these positions will be integral in maintaining optimal safety. I'm pleased to report that over the past week, we had an overwhelming response to our vacancy notices and have filled 50 of the 52 uh, positions. So that's uh, incredibly exciting for us. Additional projects include our vestibule and secured entryways, of which we're in the final completion phase. School security cameras have been successfully installed at the remaining schools that did not have them, as well as enhanced camera systems um, at many of our secondary schools. And that project will continue uh, throughout the upcoming school year. Procurement of shatterproof uh, and screening film for our school windows and the school uh, bus stop arm camera evaluation. And thank you for your advocacy on that project, Mr. Carroll, as well. We have enjoyed our regular communication and alignment meetings with CPD, DSS, and MHSS, which included MOU dialogue and revisions. I should mention that uh, CCPS continues to solicit 
parent feedback through August 4th uh, regarding the MOU, at which point any feedback will be reviewed and considered by the board and other pertinent entities. Moving on, this slide highlights some of our previous areas of focus that continue to be implemented in the school division, again pertaining to physical safety. Examples include full-time registered nurses at each of our schools, AED replacements, and the purchase of portable units to support outside activities. And we maintain stock epinephrine, albuterol, and Narcan on site. Our building points of access are FOB and doorbell controlled, Building staff continue to relay emergency matters via the RAVE app, and preventative maintenance audits and safety inspections by our staff have helped to more immediately identify needed action pertaining to playgrounds, stadiums, water quality, electrical needs, and fire panel replacements. Certain staff also participate in annual threat assessment training, assisting in identifying threat levels and appropriate next steps which is a good topical sub segue into some of our social, emotional, and mental health safety initiatives as we acknowledge that safety mechanisms must not only be addressed in physical form. Gaggle, while a re reactionary tool, is a resource that alerts school officials to words, images, or searches on a student's Chromebook that suggests troublesome thoughts or behaviors that warrant a deeper evaluation to specifically include but not limited to threats to self or others. And we have increased our school counseling and mental health service staffing beyond what is prescribed via the VDOE standards of quality to assist in meeting the increasing support and mental health needs of our students. We also proactively supplement our time with students, embedding curriculum and lessons such as sources of strength, signs of suicide, the DESA or Devereaux Student Strengths Assessment uh, Screener, Substance Abuse Awareness, PBIS, and Digital Citizenship Modules in an effort to deepen students' general knowledge while also growing their muscles of self-awareness, advocacy, and resilience. Our Recovery Academy, the first of its kind in the Commonwealth, is a great testament to these goals while providing extensive wraparound services in addressing addiction and any tethered mental health need. Finally, I'll highlight our Promote Respect program, which is tailored by school to inform students, parents, and staff on uh, bullying, as well as the means by which to report. Once more, what I've shared is fairly extensive, but not all encompassing, and hopefully you each can see that when we say safety is our top priority, in fact it is. So thank you. Just to build a little more on what Dr. Murray just presented, um, our prevention program is really, really involved in the schools. And so when schools go out at the end of the year, it's really just a starting point for our prevention team. They're working with the teachers, they're working, uh, looking at the curriculum that they presented last year and trying to modify that into what might need to be needed for the current school year. And so just to give you an idea, there are classroom lessons for students in elementary, middle, and high school that are across a number of topics. For example, 226 different lessons were presented last year in the schools. Um, in the elementary school, there's um, classes about bullying, there's classes about you know, substance use in the upper grades, like fifth grade, uh, there's lessons on violence. Um, in the middle school, you're getting lessons about the signs of suicide that Dr. Murray mentioned. I think there were 117 lessons that were presented last year in the middle schools. Um, in the high school, there were 106 lessons presented there around signs of suicide. They go deeper into anger management, understanding mental health. There's just a number of prevention programs or lessons that are taught with the students. There's also small group classes that are needed um, or potentially needed for students. I think there were 45 of those that were presented um, or occurred last year. Um, it can be on things such as friendship, grief, social skills, stress and anxiety, divorce, separation, all kinds of topics that students uh, might be dealing with in the home or at school. There are adult classes that are presented uh, for parents. Uh, there's parent consultations that occur for parents that are needing uh, any type of consultation around uh, their children's needs or maybe something with the family as a whole. 
Uh, there's school personnel training, so prevention staff are actually training teachers. Uh, there's things on, on surrounding substance use, trauma stewardship, enhancing your wellness, <coughs> just a number of topics, again, where our staff are working directly with the teachers. And just in June, uh, Lauren Leistad, who is our substance use response coordinator, uh, she trained um, a number of PE teachers around substance use trends, risk and protective factors during a professional development day. Moving on a little bit to uh, 988 and co-response. So I'm gonna give a more deeper uh, presentation on this in September when our CSB presents to the board, but there is a tie-in to the schools. And so last year, um, as you know, over the past year, we implemented the Marcus Alert protocols, which was also tying in 988 to our 911 system here in Chesterfield. And so there's a ton of calls, as you can see, just over the first year, there were over 2,700 calls, almost 2,800 calls that 988 answered on behalf of Chesterfield. Um, when you look down a little bit further, we implemented co-response teams, so that's where our crisis staff and our police go out together into the community to address calls. And so of the 2,800, almost 450 calls were handled by our co-response team. Of that, we were able to divert hospitalizations in 54%. Um, I think it might even be a little bit higher than that, but that was the latest numbers that were presented. Um, but when you look at these other factors, 0.04% resulted in arrest and less than 1% involved juveniles. But we do know that there have been some mental health challenges, quite a few mental health challenges with students, and that's where our co-response team has played a pivotal role in really getting integrated with the schools over the past year. And so just uh, as you'll see there, Matoka Elementary did a thank you breakfast for the co-response team uh, just for a lot of assistance that they had provided. Um, to some students there. But there were trainings and things that occurred so that all of the teachers in the schools could become aware of our co-response services. Um, because on average, um, last year I think maybe five to seven calls a month um, that we had um, that were involving students directly in the schools. But what's cool about this is that um, the 911 system, 911, 988, the school system, mental health, and our mobile crisis uh, programs are all integrated together. So if 988 gets a call involving a student, and it's less likely it would be directly unless it's after hours. If, there, if it's after hours, that might be the case. But during the day, if schools are calling, all of these partners are working together to address the student need immediately. And so we have REACH, uh, which is a mobile crisis, a regional mobile crisis service, as well as CREST, we're all integrated together and they see us, as they see the schools in mental health as being a key partner. And so we get priority service for a lot of these needs uh, when we're trying to solve things with students. So we have been seeing some really good success over the past year since the co-response teams have been integrated along with our 988 partners. There is going to be specifically for students uh, for this upcoming school year, and actually they're working on it now, a specific 988 campaign. It's actually gonna be a 988 campaign across the state, but specifically here in Chesterfield, our teams are already working together to provide a specific targeted campaign for youth. And so some of the strategies that they're currently working on is incorporating 988 messaging into the signs of suicide lessons. So the lessons that we were talking about that we do, 988 messaging is gonna be incorporated into those trainings. There's gonna be presentations delivered about 988 to additional grade levels and to parents that do not receive these signs of suicide um, lessons. They're gonna include information about 988 on the Chesterfield School System Mental Health Hub being created by the school counseling program. Uh, they're exploring putting 988 on the back of student ID cards. There's social media messaging that's going to occur to parents. There's 988 materials that will be in school counseling suites. Uh, there's gonna be targeted messaging to student athletes, and they're also going to be targeted messaging to youth who are homeless and, and in foster care along with their families. So this is just a number of things that are currently being worked on, but again, um, we've seen a strong partnership here with the development of this system and, and are really proud when we're looking at the outcomes that are occurring from, from the 988 and co-response programs. Moving on to Recovery Academy, so uh, as Dr. Murray mentioned, this is, this is a key program in the schools. It is the first here um, in, in Virginia, and a, a 
strong partnership that we have with the school system in deliver delivering the services to these students. So this is our second year of uh, completing um, a, an academic year. We had 38 students that were served this past year in the school. Uh, we completed, or 10 students graduated from the program, but all students uh, graduated or completed their current grade level. Uh, mm -hmm. 15 students uh, gained employment. There were over 200 clinical and recovery groups that were provided to students. There were over 1,500 individual clinical sessions that were provided to students, and that's just in this past year, not over the two years. These are last year results. And then students achieved over 79 months of sobriety. Um, we do know that we have uh, 12 students that are um, enrolled for this upcoming year as of right now. We have others that are currently in the intake process, and so we know that additional students will um, be coming into the program once school starts. We also have integrated peer services into this program. It's very important to do that. And so we're partnering with Recovery Corps, and so they uh, provide or conduct a lot of groups for the students, and they also do a lot of after hours uh, work with the students. It's not just during the school day. Um, and also, you know, in the summertime, there's a number of students that are in summer school, but those students that are not in summer school, uh, there's virtual groups uh, with them every week, virtual check-ins, and then um, also the alumni from the program also have the opportunity to come back and have groups and, and check-ins with the team as well. So, I will turn it over to Keita. All right. Uh, Child Protective Services is a... Thank you, Dr. Child Protective Services is another piece of how we ensure the safety and well-being of children in our community. Uh, to do this work well, it really takes the collaboration and coordination among many departments, those that are here at the table, as well as some that are not, such as the Commonwealth Attorney's Office, the Child Advocacy Center, and quite frankly, the community. The community uh, plays a huge role in helping us to identify um, concerns of children and so many of the areas that I mentioned we have our own rules and regulations that guide our work many have statutory requirements um, that we have to abide by and so what we've done in Chesterfield is really created a roadmap that helps us to align all of our mutual responsibilities and statutory requirements in a way that allows us to work more seamlessly more efficiently um, and creates the best experience for any child or family that's going through a child protective situation. In FY24, we did update a uh, previous memorandum of understanding with Chesterfield County Public Schools, and we also created our first memorandum of understanding with the police department. We did not have that uh, initially. Within both of those agreements, one of the enhancements that was made was previous agreements were silent on the presence of other agreements. And so um, schools and police will talk about that they have an agreement that they're working on. And so what we did in the two agreements with uh, social services and schools and the police was we referenced the presence of the other agreement in any area where there was intersection in the work that we do. Again, a way to try to create as much um, collaboration and understanding of the work that we do. Also in those agreements are various best practices. So one is that doing this work, it's best for kids to only be interviewed once. Each of us has the responsibility of conducting the interview. Social services has to do an interview. Schools have their own investigations they have to do and police. Um, as well. And so what the memorandum of understanding really does is helps us to understand how do we do this so that kids don't have to go through multiple um, investigations. And so that those values are embedded within the memorandums of understanding um, that we have uh, created. <clears throat> One of the um, areas that's also in the MOU, it talks about making reports. Uh, schools are mandated reporters, M many of us are mandated reporters, and so one of the things that social services has a responsibility of doing is providing mandated reporter training, helping um, the community as well as educa educators and law enforcement, everyone who may see a child who could um, be at risk or be experiencing a safety issue. 
what we do is provide mandated reporter training that helps individuals to um, know what we need um, at the time of a referral to give us the best chance of being able to intervene because we do have statutory requirements that limit or identify situations where we are able to uh, intervene. Where we're not able to intervene, there are times when we give it to our partners in law enforcement who have different um, ways that they can interview, intervene that schools or social services may not have. And so the MOU really speaks to that as well as the mandated reporter training really tries to help educate the reporter so that so that we're teaching them what our rules are and they can give us the best information so that we can uh, protect kids. In FY24, we completed about, we uh, trained about 250 uh, educators were trained. Um, we have also added um, a collaborative approach to the training where we train with Chesterfield Police Department as well. Um, and our largest group that we had in FY24 was with principals was our largest group. It was about 75 folks who we trained at that time. Um, to do this work well, it requires that we stay in contact with each other, that we're talking, that we're sharing information. And what was mentioned earlier is about a group that we, we call the Communication and Problem Solving Group. This is really a leadership group that's coming together regularly to identify any barriers that our staff may be facing on the front lines and for us to do our part as leaders to figure out how do we remove those barriers. Um, oftentimes we have to bring in county attorneys or school attorneys. Again, as I said, we have requirements that um, where we would like to have some flexibility, sometimes the law doesn't allow us to have that flexibility and so we just hash that out so that our folks on the front line don't have barriers that are preventing them from doing the best job in protecting um, kids. And so what I will do is transfer it over to police because they actually lead that group. And as uh, I try to wrap things up here for y'all, um, I want to, first of all, uh, remind you that a couple of the reasons that we exist as a police department are to one, protect the vulnerable, vulnerable and two, to establish problem-solving partnerships. And what you're hearing today is uh, a, a very nice synthesis of those two priorities coming together. Um, because who can say that anything, our students are, are the most vulnerable population that we have in the county. And to have a group of folks uh, like sitting next to me who have established partnerships to work on ways to smooth things out, as Kiva mentioned, to um, remove those barriers and to do everything that we can to work towards safety for our student population is just key. Um, and something that she mentioned about the group that, that um, police and all the different agencies represented here, plus the Commonwealth attorney and the county attorney and um, school board attorney, uh, that's been going on for about a year now. Um, and some of the stuff that you have already heard about and the things that I will talk about are a culmination of that partnership. So it's at the leadership level, but also um, boots on the ground that are making sure that we get this done right for our community. Um, that's a little bit smaller than I thought it was going to be on this <laughs> slide. Uh, but uh, w one of the things that um, you think about when you think about the police is, uh, is how we interact with the community in a lot of different ways and wear many hats. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is, is take a few of those hats and just give you a broad overview of kind of where we are and, and how we intersect with uh, other agencies, um, but also with the community as a whole. So uh, I know you're aware of our Chesterfield Police Activities League, and that bullet right there gives you a, a little bit of an idea of what's been going on there. Um, you know, Mr. Luther was just up here talking about Parks and Rec, and we have a number of our folks that are right now uh, today working on one of those camps with the Parks and Rec folks, um, and they'll be doing that for the next uh, couple weeks, actually, uh, th and throughout the summer, um, that interact with a lot of different agencies throughout the department to give students an opportunity to uh, <coughs> get out, get active, uh, maybe not be somewhere where they're gonna get in trouble, things like that, but also to see the police in a, in a mentor role that we can come alongside and partner with them uh, and have fun. And um, a lot of different ways that we do that are, are listed there. 
The second bullet is uh, just highlighting our cadet program. It used to be called our Explorers, um, but that's an opportunity for students in the community um, from all areas to come together, get to know what the police is a little bit, um, kind of like a, a club, but it's a little more organized than, than just a club. And you can see where the, you know, they in, are involved in a lot of different meetings, a lot of different activities. And um, one of the ways that we see a benefit from, from this is a number of our cadets have gone on to become police service aides or um, officers uh, joining our ranks. And so we, we really think that that's a good program to continue. And then I wanted to highlight, this is something that may not always get um, much attention, but our child safety office. So um, in our, in our um, safety section of the police department, child safety, we, also, we have our SRO side of things, and we have our child safety. And those are our, our child safety officers are the ones who are in the elementary schools. Uh, and so the SROs are in the middle and high and our child safety officers, professional staff are in our elementary schools. And one of the, the things I really wanna highlight on, on this uh, bullet here is that we have a program called the STEP program. It's been in existence for years and years. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, Department of Criminal Justice Services got wind of our program here in Chesterfield and said, wow, this looks really good. Um, can we start having some talks with you? And um, in August, uh, I just had a meeting with those folks. Uh, they tell me that the governor is getting ready to sign an order to take our STEP program. It's going to be titled Be Safe Virginia, but it's our STEP program, some tweaks to it, um, but it's going to be implemented across the Commonwealth. And so we're very proud of, of that interaction and proud of that, what will be an accolade there. Um, and as I get word of, of what's going to happen out of the governor's office, I'll make sure to let everybody know what, what is coming. But I just got that um, announcement. Uh, earlier this week. Mm -hmm. So those are just a few ways um, our school safety unit uh, interacts with our community. Uh, maybe some way that we don't necessarily think about uh, school safety, but it's the, the tech side of things that we are involved in on the police side. Um, I know in uh, a couple board meetings past, there was a discussion about maps and how are, where are our maps and how are they accessible and things like that. Um, partnering with Dr. Murray's folks, uh, they um, budgeted the money to pay for a company to come in and do um, some very high-tech mapping of each of the schools. All of those maps are available on our CAD system and are accessible to our patrol and intel units so that if we need to deploy quickly, we can uh, deploy in the right way and know where things are, door numbers, hallways, all that kind of thing. So that, that's done. Uh, that's a really strong partnership with, with Dr. Murray's folks. Um, as Dr. Murray talked about, uh, integrating cameras. Um, Ten schools are online and there's a remainder to have the rest uh, brought online. These are uh, agreements that are in place that are not for day-to-day -day monitoring, that kind of thing. It's in the, in the event of a crisis, in the event of emergency, um, we will have access to see what's going on uh, in a school um, governed by some rules of order. Um, but that, that's a, a much better uh, improvement from where we are today. And we really look forward to completing that and, and then working with schools on, on that integration. And uh, something that is a rather new project is uh, in the next several weeks, we will roll out our school zone enforcement uh, camera program. Um, they're gonna be deployed at 10 locations to start. And uh, again, another uh, uh, partnership with CCPS and, and ways we can keep that population safe. Um, but that, that is just brand new and it's, it's coming up for the start of the school year. Again, a little bit smaller than I, I thought it might be, but um, I'm going to let you guys read that on your own. But uh, the bottom line is for uh, the MOU, uh, again, pr when we, we've had an existing MOU for years and years, right? About five or six years ago, we really revamped some things and, and made a, a working document better. And then um, here we are this summer, as Dr. Murray mentioned, that there is a draft that is out for public review right now. And um, we have made what is a, a good document even better by um, looking at some of the language, um, really highlighting the partnership that we share, uh, not so much focusing on the differences of, of what our work groups do, but on the similarities and how we can work together 
to keep our students safe. Um, there are a, a number of things on that slide that um, speak to that in particular. Um, and many of those have already been mentioned as far as the, the um, school security officers, their implementation and, and how we're gonna interact with them. Um, yeah, how police should or should not deal with uh, certain uh, populations within the school, things that were already there but we just kind of shored up and tweaked. Um, things about how our unit is organized, and the therapy dog that many of you are familiar with, how we can use that uh, or not. Um, and then uh, outside of that, oh, and like Kiva mentioned, the this one is a big one, is utilizing a universal form for CPS-related activities in the schools. That, um, you know, many, many years ago, I was a, a detective in what is now our vulnerable populations, and um, there's always some measure of, okay, well, who's gonna do what, and you know, at what school you get a different reaction, and, and things like that. <coughs> we are really working to uh, streamline that, and, and I can tell you that um, the work group that Kiva mentioned, and, um, and I've had meetings with Dr. Murray and his staff, um, we're really moving towards just streamlining that and making it easy on um, all the frontline workers, and what does that do? That makes things easier on the student population, and, and makes that whole process more seamless and um, better for everybody involved. So um, that's the, the highlight view. We're really pleased with where the MOU is headed and where we are. Um, that's not always the case in, in all jurisdictions from working through some of these best practices and we're just very fortunate to have worked through that uh, very well this go around. And then finally, uh, uh, an invitation to all who uh, are here and who might see this online. Um, everybody's familiar with the National Night Out and um, for the past, I don't know, I want to say 10, 15 years, we've, we've uh, ranked in the top 10 for communities greater than 300,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year we were number four. I'd love to see us be on the podium this year, right? And one, two, or three, we'll, we'll see where we go. Um, but that is a, uh, a testament to not only how our government wor interacts and works together, uh, but also how we interact with the community and the support that we have and the uh, relationships that we've established. So um, that can't happen without uh, everybody who <coughs> hears my voice right now coming together and, and working together to make sure that we continue that for Chesterfield. So uh, two weeks from yesterday is when that is, and so hopefully you'll have some time. And if anybody wants to come out and ride with uh, a police officer or um, you know, have an escort, let me know and we can make that happen. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you all, appreciate questions. Oh, you have it on the board, yeah, <laughs> great. So I'll have to say it, you can see it. Questions? Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Daniel. I did have one question. Where are we at on implementation of cameras on buses for people trying to pass buses when the um, stop arms are out? Yeah, as um, Dr. Murray mentioned, we are uh, still in the procurement process for, for looking at that program, um, but uh, cameras are, are part of the discussion in that as well. Okay. okay. Other questions, yes. Super Snyder. So the how did we determine which 10 schools the cameras are starting at, the, the enforcement ones? Yeah, yeah, it was based on uh, the amount of traffic and violations that occurred during a study. Okay. I just I just looked at, I mean, I know that the first one they had in the city had like 8,000 <laughs> tickets within the first uh, six months or something. It was insane. <laughs> there, was a, there was a study Put done. Put at your schools. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, I just think that there's that's an awesome. Uh, we we need people need to be aware of how fast they're going going through a, a school zone. It's just crazy. So there will be a yeah. whole um, media um, campaign for explaining to the public what what this is, how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a time of um, warning, right? Um, and mm -hmm. then how it's going to be implemented once the violations are summoned or cited. Will we in eventually have them at all the schools, or is it just only going to be, or how is that going to work? It just I, I mean, the plan is to look at the rate of violation and see okay. what would really warrant that. Okay. I, I don't mm -hmm. know for sure that it would be in every school okay. mm -hmm. across the county, but what okay. we started with the 10, I guess, what you might say, worst violators. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much for that question. Uh, Supervisor Carroll. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, mm -hmm. You know, both of those programs, whether it's a camera uh, program we asked for on the school buses, mm -hmm. uh, or even this program for, you know, being able to um, identify people who are speeding in the school zones. Mm -hmm. I want the community to understand and know that the ultimate goal is to make zero dollars on this, right? It's all about safety for the community and safety for the kids. We have several locations, now one from my district um, up off of Foxfield Parkway where we've put um, not just the speed trailers that the police department provides, but we actually have permanent speed signs in place. And, um, you know, when they first go in, people see them, and then they, they, they kind of, oh, i got to slow down. And then so they've been effective. Um, but I think people need to, and again, I'm glad we're going to do a public information campaign on this because people may get confused and say, oh, yeah, it's just that speed sign. No, this is the one that comes with a ticket. Uh, and so they need to pay attention. Um, so I'm glad that we're moving forward with those programs. And it's not about um, trying to get tax revenue for anybody who might think that. It's about keeping our children safe uh, and reminding people to slow down school zones. It's pretty simple, really. If we could, truth of the matter is I, I wish we'd make no money on tickets because uh, that means that everybody is obeying the law and we don't have to write any. Uh, so I look forward to those programs uh, being instituted. And I'm glad that the MOU process is going well this year. I think that's extremely important and that the collaboration is excellent. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Carroll. Dr. Mello. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A question for Dr. Murray and Ms. Reed. I'm curious to know, where do you see gaps in services? Are there services that you would like to see implemented to continue to support that you haven't entertained at this point? Mm -hmm. If anything jumps to, to your mind, feel free to to jump in I feel like uh, in schools we are very fortunate to have great partnerships of experts um, and we feel very knowledge and made available to any resource or next best service or best practice that we should be implementing so I don't feel like CCPS has um, not done its due diligence and we have in fact been critiqued by um, some parents as doing too much in the spirit of mental health um, for what that's worth so I think we're doing a, a pretty good job as it pertains to service provisions I would agree I mean I think you know and and I have my team here Melissa Ackley Julie Cox and Dr. Lauren Magruder I mean they are very integrated in the schools we I've missed it on my slide about the collaborative meetings but I think Dr. Murray mentioned that they're meeting monthly sometimes more than you know multiple times in a quarter uh, just really trying to see where those gaps might be and you know if we talked individually with them they may mention a few things that we could do but I think overall I think we have a pretty strong partnership and and are really you know I think the 988 and and the co-response I mean that's really put a lot in our community that we didn't have before so Countywide, countywide, yeah, county right, right. Very few for the schools. I mean, it's incorporated in that number, but it's countywide. Yes. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Any other questions or comments? Ms. Well, Carol. Uh, when you get a chance, can you send us a list of the schools where those cameras are going to go up? Thanks. Yeah, I, I applaud that. Thank you for that question and comment. I applaud. It's a data-driven decision, and we want to see what data underlies that decision. I do. Thank you very much for that. And thank you all for being here and for the presentation and for all the good work you're doing. Keep up the great work as we attempt to uh, pursue excellence. Thank you. Thank you.